Hello, bakers and bakerettes. How are you guys doing today? I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Uh, my day is a little better. It gets a little better every day. Um, I just keep moving and stay active, and um, that seems to be the best remedy uh, for me. Right. So, um, first, I'm, I would just want to say um, happy Sunday to everyone. Uh, I want to thank my subscribers. Um, if you're not a subscriber, please smash the subscribe button. And if you are one of those nosy people who would like to know what's going on all the time, do me a favor, click the notification bell and select all. So that as soon as I upload a video, all you nosy people and not so nosy people, you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing, right? So thank you guys for allowing me to enter into your space. I appreciate you for allowing me um, to bake, no bake, prep, whatever it is that I'm doing, your day, my way. Alrighty. So with that being said, um, I'm going to bake what I told you guys a couple of weeks I was gonna bake. I'm going to bake a Mountain Dew pound cake. Um, I want to do the melon burst or the Baja Blast, but I don't feel like going to the store. So I'm just going to do the original uh, Mountain Dew. And this is a, it's a citrus lemon lime soda. It should work just like the 7-Up cakes. This is like my favorite drink. I'm not a big 7-Up fan, but the cake's pretty good. Um, so I just wanted to try the Mountain Dew just to see um, if this is going to be an epic bake or an epic fail. I'm sure it'll be an epic bake just like all the others right yeah okay so i'm going to try this okay uh, so with that being said um i'm going to turn the blender on because i already have my sugar and my butter in the blender i have three cups of sugar and i have a cup and a half of butter and it's room temperature butter and white granulated sugar and i'm just going to put it on stir and i'm going to adjust my speed to about two i'm just going to let it cream for roughly about um, the usual time is seven to ten minutes. I want to cream it because this is the key step in baking anything, especially cakes. I'll make sure the butter is creamed just right, but I don't want to overdo it. So I'm going to place you on a brief pause while this is creaming, and I will pick you back up once it's completed. Okay, everyone. The sugar and butter is creamed, and this is what it looks like when I say it looks like ice cream. Um, it's whipped very well. Okay, everyone, now um, that the butter and sugar is creamed, um, I'm going to start adding the eggs. And I'm going to just simply place the blender on stir. And again, I'm going to add the eggs one at a time. And this recipe calls for five eggs. And you allow the eggs to come to room temperature. Okay? And you just want to burst the yolk, and then you can add your next egg. Because I'm not really mixing it to stir to get it all uh, well incorporated at this point, that's going to be the last step. I don't want to uh, beat it really fast because I don't want to overbeat uh, my dough or my batter. So now I'm on to egg three. And I did scrape down the sides of the bowl while I was creaming the butter and sugar. I just didn't show it on camera. Um, you guys know the routine. You follow me no enough now to know. Uh, this is egg four, and I always tell you that the most important step is to make sure that your uh, butter and your sugar is creamed properly. I've seen people cook and they'll turn the butter and sugar on for like three minutes, and you can see the graininess in the sugar, and it doesn't come out well when you bake your cake. So make sure that it's creamed properly. Besides having the right ingredients, and knowing the step to mix the ingredients, wet versus dry proportions, make sure that the butter and sugar is creamed right. Troubleshoot as you go. So I'm gonna increase the speed just gently here so I can get the yellow streaks out. And now I'm going to make sure that I scrape the sides of the bowl and I'm going to also Flip it from the bottom to the top. Um, and that's without taking it off the stand. I'm just gonna flip it. 
And this is making sure that no butter, no sugar, and no egg is like resting on the bottom of the uh, mixing bowl. And sometimes the yolk, uh, some yolk will be down there as well. So you just want to flip it and just make sure that everything is getting uh, mixed well. Seems to be well mixed. Make sure you remove excess from your spatula and make sure that it falls back into the bowl. You can't get everything, but you get you get most of it. You guys get this. You, you know. You've been following me enough now. You get it. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you watch two or three videos, you, you know as well the routine. All right, so we're going to turn this back on, and I'm going to adjust the speed. just a little bit of the zest of the lemon um, you just take your um, your grater and you can still grate this one and you remember you always want to that's why I should have did it from the beginning you always want to uh, twist the the lemon around and I don't really want a whole lot. I put two tablespoons of lemon, but I am going to put just a little bit of this zest um, because I'm going to squeeze the lemon juice from this one and put it in a, um, probably in a, uh, uh, like tea or something so I don't throw it away. So I'm just going to make the best of it here. Well, you always do the zest in first, but, uh, you know, it's not written in stone because I still got the zest of the lemon. So then you're gonna transfer that to your uh, mixing bowl as well. It's a little bit left in here. And if you'd rather use the zest of a lime, you can do so. If you'd rather use the zest of a uh, orange, um, you can use that as well, because this is it's a citrus uh, flavor. So any of those will work. So I'm gonna just um, turn my mixer on 
want to get those mixed in as well. The next thing I'm going to do is add one teaspoon of lemon extract, and this is Watkins. So you need one teaspoon. all-purpose flour. I've already pre-measured it in my bowl and I actually sifted it. Now I'm going to measure it and this is a half of a, a half a cup measuring cup so I'm going to do it a couple of times so of course I have to do two of these. Right? Alright so I'm going to add flour. You always start with the flour first. And if you want to use Swansdown cake flour, you may do so. That's fine. If you want to use Seth Rising flour, uh, which I wouldn't recommend it, but if you would desire it, you may use it. Um, the only thing is you're going to have to get a generic lemon lime citrus soda because the Seth Rising flour contains baking powder, baking soda, and salt. And salt is optional. If you want to use your all-purpose, you can use a half a teaspoon of salt. But you guys know... I don't really use salt. But um, self rising flour already, it has it incorporated in it, the baking powder, baking soda. And with these recipes, when you're using carbonated beverages, you really don't need baking powder and baking soda because you can have too many leavening ingredients is what you're going to run the risk of. And of course, it's going to explode in the oven um, or it'll rise too high up and then it'll pop in the middle and you'll have a mess in your oven. So be careful um, using the self rising flour. Now, I do see a lot of recipes out there that say they're using it, and I've seen recipes where they've used baking powder, baking soda, 7-Up. They've also put, uh, I think, a third or a fourth a cup of sour cream in the cake. I don't believe it because there's too much leavening ingredients in that one cake. Now, I know my leavening agents, as you know from the video. I don't, I don't believe what they're posting is so. I'm not going to try it in my kitchen because I don't want the mess to clean up in my oven, but... That's too many leavening, and they're using like a teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of baking powder, a third or a, third, a fourth to a third of a cup of sour cream, and then turn around using a cup of the uh, Seven Up or Sprite, Mountain Dew, whatever the drink may be, and I just don't believe it. So now I'm gonna add a little bit of my uh, beverage here, a little bit of the Seven Mountain Dew, not a lot, just a little. And I'm going to allow that to get incorporated in. And the Mountain Dew has to be room temperature as well. The eggs, the butter, and the Mountain Dew needs to be at room temperature. Okay. 
So now we're ready to add more flour. That's why I did the uh, video on the lemon ingredients because I see a lot of people have questions about why their cakes don't rise or why the cakes uh, burst in the oven. Um, now you know. That's why when you see recipes out there, you be cautious about trying them. So now I'm going to add more of the Mountain Dew. So I'm going to add a half cup of the flour. Now I'm going to add the remaining Mountain Dew. And now I'm going to add the last of the flour. So you start with flour and you end with flour. Increase the speed. And I'm going to place you on a brief pause while this mixes well. And I'm going to scrape down the sides of the bowl. I can actually do that now so that it gets a good mix. I'm going to scrape down the sides of my bowl. And I'm also going to release what's on my mixer here, my mixing. Then I'm going to fold from the bottom to the top as I always do making sure that everything in here um, gets well incorporated together. So now we're going to mix it well. I'm going to give it probably about three minutes and I will pick it back up as soon as it's ready to transfer to my baking pans. Okay, everyone. Um, the cake batter is ready. So now I'm going to transfer this and I've already uh, coated my pans. I'm going to transfer it to my baking pans. So for this cake, I'm going to do some individual um, rectangular shaped um, pounds. And uh, I'm going to just fill them using a, a measuring cup. I'm actually going to use the um, one third. And 
have already sprayed them. So I'm just going to scoop it up and transfer it from my mixing bowl um, to the individuals. I think it'd be easier because um, I can like put these in like um, the little individual bags and I uh, don't have to worry about cutting the cake uh, and then if anybody wants one they just grab a bag, grab a bag and go. And I'm using the one-third measuring cup, and that's that's about good. That's about almost three-fourths. And then I'll take one one-third cup and I will like add a little more to each one. I don't want them to cook outside of the baking pan. So I'm going to take my spatula and just go across the top of each one of them. Just making sure that they are level in the pan. Okay. And as usual, I'm going to tap the pan just to make sure I don't have any uh, air bubbles. I'm going to place it on this rubber mat. So now I'm going to fill the second pan, and of course I have to coat this one. This is another important step, as I always tell you, making sure that you coat your pan well, all the corners and crevices. And if you would like to line this pan with um, parchment paper, you may do so. Uh, each one of these little um, cake holders in here. But I, I, I'm making it all the time. I haven't had any problems with anything. They usually bake well. And these are both by, uh, baking pans are both by Wilson. And Wilson makes pretty good um, baking pans. And just like the other one, I will add just a little more to it to bring it up to about three fourths in the um, in, in each of the individual uh, bacon slots. I'm just uh, evening out the dough. 
in each one just to make sure it covers from corner to corner. I don't want the middle part to bake um, above the rest of it. I want it to kind of be level. But you know, there aren't any guarantees. It is what it is. And it'll eat just the same. But as you all know, presentation is everything. For some people. For me, I like cleanliness when people cooking. And I like for it, uh, whatever it is to be good. But I'm picky about food. Alright, so now, these both are ready to go in the oven. I am baking them at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is going to bake for an hour to an hour and 15 minutes, depending on your oven. So after an hour, you will check it in five minute increments and do your poke test with your fork, your toothpick, or your kebab stick, whichever one works for you, and make sure it comes out clean. Right? So 325 degrees Fahrenheit for an hour to an hour and 15, depending on your oven and your oven temperatures. Okay, so these are both ready to go in the oven. And you always put them on the bottom because you don't want anything to bake too fast. Okay, and there we have it. So I'm going to place you on a brief pause while the cake um, cakes are baking and I will pick you back up. I'm going to clean up while that's going on and when it's time to take them out, I'll be right back with you. So while the cake is baking, we're going to go ahead and prep the glaze for it. So the glaze is going to be two cups of um, confectioner sugar or powdered sugar. Some people add four tablespoons of whole milk. I'm going to add four tablespoons of the Mountain Dew, which is the most important ingredient in the cake, correct? Correct. Four tablespoons. Now I can place this in the refrigerator so I can drink some while it's when it gets cold and when the cake comes out. Okay. So I'm just gonna mix this up, and as I always say when you're doing a glaze, um, there's no right or wrong way. It depends on what you like. It's a personal preference. If you prefer the whole milk, use the whole milk. I think that if I'm doing a 7-Up cake or a Mountain Dew cake or if I'm using Sprite or whatever, that's the key component in the cake. I didn't put any milk in the cake, right? Right. That's what I thought. So I'm going to use the same ingredients that's in the cake and I'm going to make the glaze. It's just going to make a little more citrusy, that's all. So you mix the ingredients together for the glaze. This one is a little too runny for me. Um, but if you would like for it to be running, you can use this. Uh, if it seems like it's a little bit too much, I, I always say you can just add more of the ingredients. So I need to add a little bit more of the confectionate sugar. So approximately, I'm going to add uh, one tablespoon at a time. I'm just going to eyeball it. I like for mine to be just a little bit thicker. I want it to actually be visible on the cake. If you do it when it's like very loose and runny, it just runs down the cake and it'll stick to it, but it's not as visible. I want you to be able to see this. Okay, yep, that's much, much better. So if I add one more tablespoon, visibly eyeballing it, I'm measuring it by eye. Yep. Give or take it. There we go. Perfect. I 
like to make my glaze earlier, like halfway through the bake, and then I let it sit out, or I put it in the refrigerator, and of course it's gonna get a little stiffer, which is fine with me, um, but to me, it just, especially when you add the citrus to it, um, it just get the flavor just, you know, it brings it out. It brings out all that citrusy goodness. All right, so this is where I want it to be. So I'm gonna place this in the refrigerator. I'm just, just gonna let it get cool. And then I'm going to put everything I have in front of me away and uh, wash the remaining few dishes that I have here. You know, the mess up is the clean up, which is the most important part and the fun part too. Okay. Alrighty. So I will place you on a brief pause while we wait on the cake. Um, and then I will pick you back up when it's time to remove them and place this second batch in. Hello everyone. It's time to remove the cake from the oven. Beautiful. Take out the second one as well. They came out really, really pretty. Right. So I'm going to allow these to uh, cool for like 10 minutes and then I'm going to transfer them from the baking pan to my parchment paper I have lined here so I can um, glaze them and I can get the second batch uh, in the oven. Okay, so I will place you on a brief pause while these cool and then I'll pick you back up when it's time to do the transfer. Okay guys, I have removed the individual pounds from the baking pan and I have them cooling on my, um, well continuing to cool on my um, lined parchment paper that I placed on the counter here. All right. And I just simply removed them using just a regular pair of, just some simple, just pick them up and lay them. All right. And I have my last bit of dough uh, already distributed in my baking pan. And I'm getting ready to place these in the oven as well and let these bake. Okay, so it took exactly one hour in my oven for these to bake. And these are small, these aren't the actual cake, as in the cake pan, the bunt style. They are individuals, but it still took an hour for them to actually bake. And I checked them every 30, like 30 minutes, and then 15, 45 minutes, which would have been 15 additional minutes. And then it took 15 more and they were done. And you know because um, this center part on each one of these is going to be kind of um, moist. You'll see like little, um, it looks like little indentions in it where it's still moist. And when all of that is gone, then the top will be a pretty golden brown. All right. so these came out really, really good. Um, I do have one I want to show you. Because um, we know that the ones that are in the oven are going to come out and they're going to look exactly the same as these. So I did glaze this one. I allowed it to cool for 10 minutes, uh, actually 15, because I put it on the plate and let it cool a little bit longer. And I did glaze it. And as you can see, it is very, very moist. Very easy to cut into. It's really, really, really soft really soft. I'll pick up a piece so you can actually see how how soft it is. And it's really good. You can actually taste the difference between this and the 7-Up. Alright, I wish I could share it with you. Now, I may be biased because I really like uh, Mountain Dew, but I don't think so. I think I'm going to be honest with this. 
This tastes better than the 7-Up. And this is what the inside looks like. As you can see, it's very, very moist, very fluffy. It has a very nice texture to it, and it has a, a nice citrusy, uh, citrusy, as I can, if I can get my words out, taste. And adding the 7-Up to the confectionate sugar for the glaze was a spot on. Okay. All right, I'm going to place this here. And just thank you guys for joining me on this epic uh, bake. Yes, this is the first time I have baked the Mountain Dew. Uh, like I said, um, I did the 7-Up and I did one using an off-brand. And they both came out really good. I like, seven, I like Mountain Dew. And I thought about it. But you can do any of the carbonated beverages. It, I mean, they will all work. But the key is that a lot of the recipes that you see online, they have a lot of added ingredients. Some will be 11 ingredients, 13 ingredients, 15 ingredients. And they think the more ingredients that you add to it, the better it's gonna make it. Every cake that you bake has a couple of things in common. The flavor, the flour, the eggs, and the sugar. Everything after that, is what changes the texture and flavor. A lot of people really don't understand leavening agents and how they work, which is why I did that um, video on the leavening agents. And I do have a little bit more information to share on those, but I felt that was enough. I try not to make long, drawn-out videos. But I do have another one that goes a little bit more in depth. I gave you the general scope and the chemistry behind it. But they really uh, include a whole lot of things in the bakes that are not necessary. Uh, one of the uh, Mountain Dew cakes, someone I saw baked, and they post on Facebook. It's been a while back. And they actually have been on my uh, channel. They probably heard me say on the video that I was going to bake that cake using 7-Up. I mean, using Mountain Dew. And the next thing I knew, they had one out. But that's okay. Because uh, nobody does it like you do it. You can have a million ideas and a million people can do it. But nobody's going to do it the way you do it. And I know they're not going to do it the way I do it. They put baking soda and baking powder, which sent out. Her cake was like yellow. It was like a more of a, a, a golden texture to the actual cake itself. But as you can see with mine, my cake, the actual interior of the cake, looks like any other cake that you would bake. Okay, hers was more like a, it was like really deep, um, the yellow color that it was. But it's okay. Her, it was almost like a brown, like a, a, a hint of brown to it. But when you learn things, you do better. And I'm not going to knock anyone for what they do because that's their way. And, and I do everything my way. And I explained that on the first day when I created this channel. Right? So it's neither here nor or yonder. You know, it's, it is what it is. But anyway, it turned out really, really good. And I'm really pleased with the bake. Um, if I bake this again, I'm not going to change anything. I'm satisfied with uh, what I've created. Um, I may change a glaze. Um, I may add um, a combination of like lemon and lime juice to it or lemon, lime, and orange juice to give it, uh, see if it gives it a, a nice kick of that citrus. But I really like it with the lemon extract and the fresh lemon juice that I squeezed. It was two tablespoons of lemon juice and then it was one uh, teaspoon of the lemon extract, which gave it a really nice taste, uh, blending in with the um, citrus flavor of the Mountain Dew. Okay, and as you can see, I didn't need baking powder or baking soda because they all rose to the occasion, okay? All right, so uh, thank you guys for following, me, following along with me on this bake. If you are a subscriber, I greatly appreciate you. And if you're not a subscriber, I appreciate you as well. And I uh, hope that you're encouraged to go out and smash that subscribe button so you can be a subscriber and join us on all these epic bakes and preps and no bakes and cooks and all the other things um, that are coming in the future to this channel. Um, also, I'll click the thumbs up as you come in because that's the like button and it says it's a positive video um, and you can click it on your way out after you've watched the video, but just make sure you click the thumbs up because that just helps to push the videos out into the YouTube world or logarithm and it just says that it's a positive video and it's worth watching all right 
Um, and I try to do everything from a tutorial base so that it's actually worth watching and not just a silent video where people are mixing things or if they're talking, they're just mixing up stuff and there's no rhyme or reason behind it and no explanations. And then when you try it, it doesn't work out. So I try to explain um, all the steps as I go, give you suggestions of things that you can do, add, substitute, modify, you know, as we go along, all right? So um, also click the notification bell so that um, as soon as I upload a video, as I said in the beginning, so all the nosies can kind of be in on the know and you can come in and see what's um, happening. And also so that all of my subscribers can get to see everything firsthand. All right so thank you guys again and as always please 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 leave a comment if you modify or bake anything that i prepared please leave a comment let us know how it turns out for you email me a picture at cassie's kitchen creations at gmail.com and i'll post a picture of your bake giving you credit on uh, my community page all right so if you're a subscriber thanks if you're not you know join us and as always, leave a comment, keep it positive, be mindful of the things you do and say on a daily basis. Um, I challenge you to spread the month of September nothing but positive vibes. Um, share with someone, you know, joy, happiness, so that they can find peace in their life. In our world today, there is just so much going on. Um, I don't really watch a whole lot of news, but I do hear about things and then I'll go and, you know, read the articles just to see, was this really true? Um, but just try to keep positivity going through the month of September and hopefully we can carry it on out uh, indefinitely because the people that we encounter on a daily basis, we really don't know what they're going through. Uh, whether they are just um, suffering from depression, um, if they just have, um, you know, a mental um breakdown a nervous breakdown if they have panic attacks anxiety attacks i mean just things going on in their life where they're they either don't have a job they're not able to you know secure a job they have children that are you know not uh we'll say off the beaten path they're like not following um parental instructions i mean we just don't know what people are going through on a day daily to daily basis uh, jobs uh, supervisors co-workers just so much going on in this world so let's keep positive vibes going throughout the month of September remember to always motivate someone also motivate yourself to, so that you can motivate others um, be an inspiration to others as you inspire yourself um, encourage others as you are very well so encouraging yourself you know we can't do for others what we're not able or capable of doing for ourselves right so um, for September, let's do that. Um, let's uplift someone, lend a helping hand to someone. You know, um, of course, always be very, very mindful of your surroundings, um, especially as we going into the Halloween um, month that's coming. So always be mindful of your surroundings. Um, keep it real, for sure, most definite. Always be respectable always display gratitude and always be kind to everyone thanks again guys for coming along with me with me on this epic bake allowing me to bake your day and as we say my way have a great one and i will see you guys on the next bake no bake prep cook etc have a wonderful week.